Welcome to my home. Hi, I'm Cindy Merritt and I'm your local real estate partner. And just like you, I live, work, and play in the Richmond, Virginia area and all around our wonderful surrounding counties. Today we are at a place in Richmond right near the Diamond that I did not even know existed. This is Danny Anderson and Danny is the head armor of what? The Richmond Fencing Club. So the Richmond Fencing Club is a 501c nonprofit organization that teaches the Olympic sport of fencing. Wow, okay, that is great. So how long have y'all been here? We have actually been in this facility for over 15 years and the Richmond Fencing Club actually traces our roots back to the early 80s when we were the Virginia Commonwealth University Fencing Club. Okay. Uh, early in the 90s, the university uh, basically lost interest in the program and the Richmond Fencing Club was born. All right, and you train athletes to fence. fence. Okay. So we train athletes to do the competitive sport of fencing, the Olympic sport. So our students are all over the United States right now in colleges and university fencing programs. We have a former student at the Air Force Academy. Wow. Here in the state of Virginia, we have students at William & Mary, Virginia Tech, and University of Virginia's fencing programs. We all are competitive fencers. We practice all over the United States. We compete all over the United States. Uh, some of our fencers even go to international competitions. That's great. Okay, and you have this cool looking guy right here. His this name is, is Alphonse. This is Alphonse. Okay. Alphonse is a fencing practice dummy. <laughs> okay. So he is designed that you can hit him with a weapon without damaging the weapon or yourself. He is designed to take impacts. He is designed to hold weapons. Uh, for one of the weapons, the foot is on target. He is actually designed to have a mobile foot so you can practice hitting his feet. A uh, little humor on Alphonse, he was built for the Richmond Fencing Club by myself and my son, who is a senior at VCU, and my son agreed to be the life model for him. Oh so Alphonse so is, this the is, exact, your son. He is the exact physical size of my son. Okay. Uh, height, weight, we did every, well, height at least, weight. Alphonse weighs over 400 pounds. He's a little bit bigger than most wow. fencing dummies. Okay. And, and what do you what do you do with him? Do you with duel Alphonse, with him? With Alphonse, you literally can duel with him. Okay. Um, with Alphonse, he can hold the weapon. Whoa, okay. So you can, you can practice and you can put the weapon in stable. You can practice hitting Alphonse so that you're lunging to target areas that would score touches. Okay. It allows you to practice touches on his shoulders, his back, his foot. The three different weapons in fencing all have different scoring areas. So the first weapon everybody sees is always foil. Only the torso of the body scores in foil. So if somebody's practicing foil, they'll be working just to the body. For saber, which is what I'm holding in my hand, the entire upper body, head and arms are all on target. So a saber fencer will practice making little hand touches, beat the blade, go to the head, go to the body, the entire blade will contact. An FA fencer, everything including the foot is on target, so FA fencers will move the foot, have the foot moving, and they'll drop down and practice beat, hit, go to the foot. They'll practice hitting multiple areas. And this is a safe way for students to practice mm -hmm. without worrying about breaking their weapons, without worrying about hitting an opponent that is busy. Okay. So this is an, a permanent member of our club that is always available for practice. Okay. Now, this seems like it's a lot of fun and a lot of athleticism. Is it dangerous? Not really. Fencing actually compared to any other martial sport. So that's the first thing. Fencing is a, considered a martial sport. It's okay. no different than boxing, MMA, karate, kung fu, any other martial sport. Okay. So we are teaching a form of fighting that dates back to the Renaissance era. Oh, okay. The fencing schools, uh, some of the terms date back to the 1700s. Some of them date back as far as the 1200s. 
some of the techniques we still teach that have lasted all those centuries. As far as injuries, most of the injuries you see in fencing are more strained muscles. Oh, okay. Uh, right. It's a very dynamic sport on the arms and legs. Uh -huh. uh, I'm actually wearing uh, some of the protective gear. So there's two layers of a heavy nylon material protecting the body. Okay. It's designed to prevent if a blade breaks, it prevents penetration. Ah, okay. For female fencers, you have to wear a mandatory hard plastic chest plate. Okay. To give you an extra layer of protection. Uh, the masks are hardened steel. The Normally in a tournament, you would be wearing knickers that made the same type of material. Okay. So everything is designed to stop penetration. The blades are extremely flexible. Wow, steel. they sure are. So they are tempered and designed to flex. So when they hit, the blade takes the, the actual force of the impact, not the body. Okay. Uh, this is one of the only sports I know that the, the parents and kids can compete together. This is my son, Danny Anderson Jr. Big Danny and little Danny. Once fencers are over 13 years old, they fence in the adults. Now, once you're over 40, you can fence in the veterans, but you still can play with the youngsters too. Okay. Our oldest fencer is what? Our oh, oldest fencer is a young lady that is 76 years old. So there is no kind of age limit on the sport. That's the other huge difference. Okay, and you love it. Oh yes, I wouldn't do anything else. All right, now this is Damian Layfield, and he is one of the coaches here at Richmond Fencing Club. And you're gonna show me all about, I thought they were just swords. But yeah. they're different kinds, right? That's right. That's okay. right. So you got uh, you got epee, foil, and saber. I'll start with the epee here. Uh, this is like what you call a traditional dueling weapon. Okay. So anywhere in the body is target. You could hit somebody underneath the wrist, the foot. Uh -huh. Whole body is fair game. Um, the other kind of poking weapon is this is your foil. Okay. Hey, you want to hold it? Yes. All right. Now, so, yeah. is this what you see in the movies most of the time? You're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see like a rapier, which is kind of a variation of an epee when you're watching movies like Three Musketeers and things like that. Okay. And lastly, you got the saber. This is a more aggressive game. Wow. Right? Okay. So, uh, this weapon you can score a hit by cutting. Right. So the other ones you got to hit with a pointy end to get a point. Uh huh. This one you can score by actually slashing. Are you gonna slash somebody? I certainly could if we want to get that on, on camera. Uh, no, uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> Are they gonna bleed? <laughs> uh, no. I mean, you know, so the, the thing I want to emphasize about fencing is a very, very safe sport, right? Okay. It's got one of the lowest injury rates. Uh, they took a, a poll before the last Olympic Games and found that there's actually a higher injury rate in badminton. In badminton. Than fencing. Okay. <laughs> You've got full protective gear on. Okay. Looks like they're getting hit hard, but it's actually pretty light when you're wearing it with gear. This is Julie, and she is one of the moms of some of the fencers. fencers. My, my sons are FAists. FAists. Okay. And you were telling me that this is great discipline and that sort of thing. To talk to me about what it's done for your kids. Sure. So. Being a fencer offers discipline, uh, structure, a level of competitiveness that you can take however you wish. Uh -huh. um, but what I love the most is it offers community. So we have community within our club, but also when we go to tournaments, we find other parts of our community and we've made friends all over the country that we speak to all the time. Okay, and you were also telling me that you are a fencer <laughs> yourself. Yes, I dabble in it. Okay. I'm very new, I'm um, very much a beginner. Okay. Um, and I will say that it is very therapeutic to be able to stab your children legally. <laughs> That's great. And they actually can do the same to you. Yes, and they can return the favor. So, and I think that's therapeutic for them as well. It's a lot of fun uh, to be able to, it's a lifelong sport. So as someone in her mid forties, I can fence my children who are in their teens and we can develop skills together and be competitive together. Uh, and there's not a lot of sports where you can actually do that. That's great. Thank you for talking to us, Jolly. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Thanks. So if you would love to have some great family fun, some great exercise and discipline, Come on down to the Richmond Fencing Club, make yourself a home. Alphonse here will show you around and you'll be really glad you did. Cindy Merritt is nationally recognized as a leader in the U.S. real estate market. Of the more than 35,000 realtors in Virginia, the American Institute of Real Estate Professionals consistently ranks Cindy in the top 10 best realtors in the state. Make Yourself at Home is sponsored in part by Paul Adams, branch manager and nationally recognized senior loan officer with Prime Lending, 
a Plains Capital company. With over 400 mortgage options available, Paul Adams and his team work hard to uncover the key to each client's mortgage success.